In this video we'll uncover the true definition of a confidence interval. We will clear up some common misconceptions and explain the difference between the incorrect and the correct interpretation. So let's get started. First of all, why do we need confidence intervals? In statistics, parameters of the population are often estimated based on a sample. Therefore, on the one hand, you have the population, but since in most cases you cannot serve the entire population, you draw a sample. Now we want to use this sample to estimate a parameter of the population. Parameters that can be estimated are, for example, the mean or the variance. Let's look at an example. You want to know the height of all professional basketball players in the US. In order to figure this out, you draw a sample. The mean of the sample is most likely different from the mean of the population. Let's assume that we draw not just one, but several samples, which of course you don't actually do in practice. Each sample is likely to show a different mean. So, in the first sample we have one mean, in the second sample we most likely have another mean, and again, in another sample, we have another mean. Of course, it is also possible that, purely by chance, two or more samples have means that are exactly the same, but this is very unlikely. Now it would be extremely valuable to have a range that we expect to capture the true parameter with a certain level of confidence. And this is precisely where the misconception about confidence intervals comes in. In fact, published studies have shown that scientists frequently misinterpret confidence intervals. Let's dive in and break down exactly what a confidence interval means and just as importantly, what it does not mean. There are two common ways to explain the confidence interval. On the one hand, there is a simpler explanation of the confidence interval, but it's not correct when viewed from a frequentist statistics perspective. On the other hand, there is a slightly more complex explanation that is actually true. To make the difference clear, we'll start with the simple but wrong interpretation, then explain why it falls short and finally lead us to a clearer understanding of the correct interpretation. To keep things simple, let's focus on the 95% confidence interval. But the same goes for the others, of course. So let's address the simple but incorrect interpretation. This interpretation goes like this. There is a 95% chance that the true parameter lies within a calculated confidence interval. So what does this actually mean? Imagine we have a population with a true mean value. This true mean value is the one we want to estimate. Although we don't know this true mean, we can make an educated guess by taking a sample from the population. From this sample, we calculate both the sample mean and the 95% confidence interval. The simplified interpretation is to say the confidence interval provides a range within which the true mean lies with a certain probability. Or in case of the 95% confidence interval we would say there is a 95% chance that the true value falls within this interval. However, this interpretation isn't accurate. But why? In frequent statistics, the true parameter, in our case the true mean, is treated as a fixed but unknown quantity. So the true parameter does not move around, it is fixed. If we now draw a sample and calculate a confidence interval, the true value either lies inside the interval or it doesn't. In this case, the confidence interval contains the true value. Therefore, there's no probability associated with the parameter being within this specific interval. But why? Because probabilities in frequentist terms only apply to events that are subject to variability. And again, the true parameter is fixed and cannot change. The only thing that varies is the sample data we collect. Every time we draw a new sample, we have new data and consequently a new mean and confidence interval. So for example, in this sample, the true value falls within the confidence interval. If we take a second sample, maybe the confidence interval will not include the true value. 
Therefore, there's no probability associated with the parameter being within this specific interval. But why? The reason is that probabilities in frequentist terms only apply to events that are subject to variability. And again, the true parameter is fixed and cannot change. Therefore, you cannot assign a probability to the true parameter being in a given interval. The parameter is either inside the interval or it's not. The only thing that varies is the sample data we collect. Every time we draw a new sample, we have new data and consequently a new mean and confidence interval. So, for example, in all these samples, the true value falls within the confidence interval, while in those samples, it doesn't. In summary, you can say that there is a 95% chance that this interval contains the true parameter. Because once the interval is calculated, it either contains the parameter or it doesn't and there is no probability left to assign in the frequentist sense. But what is the correct interpretation? Let's say we took a lot of random samples and we calculated the mean value and the confidence interval of each sample. The confidence interval can now be interpreted in the following way. If we were to take an extremely large number of random samples and construct a confidence interval for each sample, 95% of those intervals would contain the true value, while 5% would not. In other words, if we were to take 100 random samples, we would expect that on average 95 of the confident intervals would contain the true value, while 5 would not. You can also see it the other way around. The confidence interval can be defined in terms of probability with respect to a single theoretical sample that has yet to be realized. Therefore, if you haven't drawn the sample yet, you can be 95% sure that the interval from the next sample you draw will contain the true value. But if you have taken the sample, the true value is either in the interval or not. Therefore, confidence is about the method, not the specific interval. The 95% confidence refers to the long-run reliability of the method you use to construct the interval. It means that if you use this method repeatedly on different samples, you expect to capture the true parameter 95% of the time. But once you've applied it and obtained a specific interval, you then cannot make a probability statement about whether this interval contains the fixed true parameter or not. A side note. In statistics, there are two distinct approaches or frameworks, the frequentist and the Bayesian. The confidence interval is a method used in the frequentist approach. In a Bayesian approach, we would treat the parameter as a random variable with its own probability distribution, reflecting our uncertainty about it. In that framework, it would make sense to say that, given our data, there is a certain probability that the parameter will fall within a certain range. But compared to the frequentist interpretation, this is a fundamentally different way of thinking. In the Bayesian approach, there is a concept known as the credible interval, which serves as the counterpart to the confidence interval in frequentist statistics. But unfortunately, there's also critics of the Bayesian way. In short, Bayesian statistics require the use of a so-called prior distribution. The main criticism is that credible intervals may not be entirely objective as they are influenced by the choice of the prior distribution. This makes the results potentially sensitive to subjective inputs. However, this same feature can also be seen as a strength, as it allows for incorporating prior knowledge into the analysis in a principled way. Okay, but now to the easiest part. How is the confidence interval for the mean calculated? If your data are normally distributed, the confidence interval for the mean can be calculated with this formula. The confidence interval CI is x bar plus or minus z times s divided by the root of n. Here x bar is the mean, z is the z value for the respective confidence level, n is the sample size and s is the standard deviation. 
plus minus results from the fact that we have once the upper limit with plus and once the lower limit with minus. Where do we obtain the set value? The set value for a given confidence interval can be found in a standard normal distribution table, which lists set values corresponding to the different confidence levels. For example, at a 95% confidence level, the set value is 1.96. Using this, the confidence interval can be expressed as the sample mean plus minus 1.96 times the standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size. The confidence interval can of course be calculated for many statistical parameters, not only for the mean value. If you like, take a look at our book Statistics Made Easy. You will find the link in the video description. Thanks for watching and see you next time.